Last night, I uh, picked up a copy of the uh, Lexington County Chronicle. I didn't read it. I just bought it and set it in my truck. And I said, because normally I arrive here about 6 in the morning. Normally just shoot a fat with Steve, but I knew Steve wasn't going to be here, so I said, well, I'll just get here and I'll just I'll read the Chronicle in the morning until everybody gets here to drink coffee. And, uh, you found out that you had not been drinking. Yeah, I found, I, I found out that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that I was not threatened by Miss, Miss Roxanne Wilson. There's an editorial in here. It's kind of oh. comical. Uh, I'll read it to you. Uh, the headlines say, Chronicle headline, misleading. And that's in reference to the week before's headline that stated, Congressman's wife threatens uh, House candidate. <laughs> House candidate being me. And she did threaten you. It says, and last, this is coming from Miss Roxanne Wilson. This is her editorial here. In last week's Chronicle, a headline on an, on an article about Eddie McCain at the Casey Mafia meeting was misleading. It read, Congressman's wife threatens House candidate. I, in no way, threatened Eddie McCain, a candidate for House seat 39. Uh, I did state that I would let the people of the Batesburg Leesville area know that he was not a supporter of my husband, Congressman Joe Wilson. It was a statement of fact, not a threat. If you're running against him, you're not a supporter. <laughs> I felt the voters of House District 39 would appreciate knowing that McCain had not voted for or supported my husband in the last election. I believe voters need to be aware of who candidates support and where they stand. There are other fine Republican candidates in that race who support Joe Wilson. While it is Eddie's right to support whomever he chooses, it is also my right to inform the public when he makes a statement in a public forum as he did at the Casey Mafia meeting. Your article did not mention the discussion that preceded or concluded our meaningful exchange. I sincerely hope that the voters of House District 39 consider McCain's total lack of conservative support for Joe Wilson. <laughs> conservative, huh? Okay. McCain proudly calls himself a freedom nut. Perhaps that would have been a better headline for you to focus on. <laughs> I sincerely hope the voters remember this when they go to the polls. I imagine that they will. So, <laughs> I think, you know, it's nasty. I think it's, it's, it's kind of funny because, first of all, she refers to Congressman Wilson as conservative. And he, he, he doesn't vote on many issues conservatively. And then she pokes fun at my name, Freedom Nut. Which, you know, why would you want to poke fun at somebody that supports freedom, individual rights, individual freedom? Maybe somebody that doesn't support it. So I guess she doesn't support it. She says it would have been a better headline for you to vote than to focus on the fact that I call myself a freedom All that all that tells me is that, you know, somebody says they're nuts about so some people are nuts about game cop football. Some people are nuts about Princeton or Georgia sports. Or they're nuts about a particular restaurant. I'm just saying, I'm nuts about liberty and freedom. You know? Oh, yeah. And so I guess she kind of wants to poke, you know, poke a jab at that. But that's okay. So I believe what I'm, I was trying to refrain from this because I, I really don't believe in getting ugly and that type of thing. But I think I'm going to put something in the Chronicle and I'm just going to put the YouTube uh, link in it so that. Anybody that wants to can go to the YouTube and they can watch the full 27 minutes of uh, Mr. Phil Black who is speaking, who is the challenger to Joe Wilson. And then like the last minute, minute and a half was the exchange that, that she and I, I had. And it's right there on, on YouTube. So people can then judge for themselves. Make, make sure that you go and change the URL to something like a you know, tiny URL or something that someone can type in very easily. Okay. Do you right. know how to do that? I'll I'll, I'll, okay. make a, I'll make a link for you. Okay. <laughs> because you don't want to have like all these dashes and stars and they'll never look it up. Right. They'll never look it up. You need to have something like about this long that they can type in. Okay. Yeah. Also, I think anybody that read her response will, will realize that she did threaten you as much as she plays it down. That yeah, whole, you know, if you don't it's like my husband, I'm gonna tell everybody. I don't care how nicely you state that. It's still. Right. You should. 
You know, and um, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned to someone afterward, I, I said, well, you know, I said, as long as Mrs. Wilson has, has been in the political arena, and she's been in a long time, that you would think that she had would have developed thick skin and would be used to people maybe challenging some of the ways that her husband votes. And this particular person said, hey, man, he said, you know, she's got thick skin. She just did that to try to intimidate you. Oh yeah. And she said that's that's what she does. She tries to intimidate people. Now, I, I got news, man. I you know, I spent I just retired from the army. I spent twenty years <laughs> facing <laughs> command sergeant majors. And I can and I can tell you I, I know what intimidation is and I am used to it. And And that one is and intimidation just doesn't it bounces off me like water bounces off a duck. You know, I don't, I just, there's not a scaredy cat bone in my body. And, you know, I, I made the decision at, at age 50 that I would always do what I believe is the right thing to do. And I would not worry about the consequences. And that's just how I choose to live my life. And I'm not going to live it any other way. And, and, and the fact is, Congressman Wilson has voted for some horrible, very anti-Bill of Rights legislation. And the bottom line is the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, is supposed to be a contract between us and the federal government. And it states very clearly what the federal government cannot do. Cannot do. And when he, I mean, he's voted for a lot of bad bills, but the freshest bill that he just voted, the Congresswoman voted for, was the National Defense Authorization Act, which basically states that the government can now use the military. Now this may not happen next week, but it's on law right now. It could happen, it could go into it could actually go into reality effect two presidents from now. Who knows when it, when they're going to use it? But it's there now. To where they can they can go to anybody that they remotely suspect as a domestic terrorist, terrorist they can arrest you. You do not get a lawyer. You do not have the right for a trial. They can put you in jail indefinitely, and they can take you out of the United States. Now, that violates the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh amendment. You can't do that. And there, they came out not long ago. It's just very it's public knowledge. And I spoke with two, I spoke with a retired highway patrolman about what I'm fixing to tell you, and I spoke with a uh, county sheriff, I won't say which county, but a county deputy sheriff, who vouched what I'm fixing to tell you and told me they have seen the list. There, there's always, already out a list to law enforcement for what they consider potential domestic terrorists. In other words, if you're a deputy sheriff, you're a highway patrolman, you're a police officer, these are the things you look for that should draw suspect. This person may, I'm not saying he is, but he, he, he may have the attributes of a domestic terrorist. Veterans of the military service. Well, heck, that's half of South Carolina. That's me. I'm a retired army. Okay? If you have any type of bumper sticker on your vehicle that promotes the Constitution, that's me. I've got a sticker on the back of my truck that says, I happen to be one of these people who takes the Constitution literally. If you have a Ron Paul sticker on your vehicle, when the police officer pulls you over, that is to key him that you might be a domestic terrorist. I got a Ron Paul sticker on my, I got three strikes right there. Just don't think about it. Like it does, don't it? Yeah. You might be a terrorist if. <laughs> Hey, that's a good. But get this. Get this. I was, I was in. I was. Well, I can't be, I don't want to incriminate anybody. I was in the back of my truck doing my campaign bit, and a police officer came by. He liked it. He liked what I was doing. And he was telling me about the emails they get and all the the, the information they receive on who to look for, who to keep an eye on. And you know who was on the, the potential domestic terrorist list according to this police officer? If you are a member, if you are a member of the Christian denomination Pentecostals, no kidding, Pentecostals. Pentecostals. 
Yeah, they didn't say Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian. I don't. I said. I said Pentecostals. I said why? 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 Why pick out Pentecostals? What are, what are they doing to spread in the country? You know. Yep. But, yep. but, but when, you, when you take just, and there's a lot more on that list than what I just mentioned, when you take that and then you have a congressman who votes in favor of saying nobody has the right to, uh, habeas corpus is totally wiped out, you don't have the right to, to, to be, have a, a, a trial and a, a lawyer, they don't have to tell you how long you're going to be held in prison, they don't tell your family anything. And then you tie that in with the Patriot Act to where the federal government can go in and check your bank account without you knowing about it. They can go to the library and, and, and talk to the people in the library and find out what kind of books you check out. They can eavesdrop on your telephone calls. That's total violation of your Bill of Rights. I, I think that is horrible legislation. Horrible. And that is why when Mrs. Wilson wanted to know why anybody would not want to vote for her husband, Joe Wilson, I stated I wouldn't vote for him because he voted for the National Defense Authorization Act, which is a wipeout of our, I said Fourth Amendment, but it's actually Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, and Seventh Amendment. And I don't understand why he voted for it. And that's when she got upset, you know, and I'll tell everybody in Batesburg, Leesville that I don't like Jay. Trade offs. You know. So I don't like the way Joe. That's what he said right there. Yeah. Trade offs. Well, right. You vote for mine, I vote for yours. Well, not only that, but then you have the everybody is we want to be safe and secure, so we're yeah. going to give up and yeah, we need to go after those terrorists without realizing well, well, I agree that. they're on the Yeah, that's why But you, but you know something, and this may be controversial, but this is what I believe, and I'm gonna tell you what I believe. But for twenty years I took an oath to defend the Constitution. That's what, that's what you do when you're in the military. You know, you take a note. To defend the Constitution against what? All, A-L-L, -L, all enemies, both foreign and domestic. These are enemies of the Constitution that we take a pledge. Now, I think we need to be more worried about domestic enemies of the Constitution than we do foreign. All right, because I'll... it's the local enemies of our Constitution who are killing this country. How about that uh, Marine sergeant that put something on his uh, email that uh, criticized Obama or criticized hey, buddy. Okay. And now he's being court-martialed because they, he's, they said that he criti criticized the Commander-in-Chief. Yeah, well, I, so when, you're, when you're in the military, you have to be really careful what you say. You lose your own. You lose, yeah. Most people don't realize this, but the only, you're exactly right. The only people in the United States who are not really under the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, are those that are in the military. When you go into the military, you fall under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. You are no longer under the, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. You and even have, if you don't have the first yeah, you don't have the first amendment right when you're right in the military. And even if you don't agree with the man, you still have to respect the office. Right, that's it. You respect the right. Well, everybody's so, supposed to do that, but it's hard. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> this one. How about it's just joining? We out now. We ain't in the military. How about if we out now? No, no, no. You out? That's a whole different ball game. That's what I, you know. Yeah. His, his 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 question was, what about the the, the soldier or the marine? Yeah. Or, voice a lot of opinions against the, um, President Obama. And I said, they were going to try to court-martial him. I said, that's how they can court-martial him, because to a, a soldier, Marine, Airman, you know, a, a person in the Navy, Coast Guard, First Amendment does not, you don't have First Amendment rights. You fall under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. And so, although about, no, the rights that you and I have, that we're supposed to have as civilians, are not shared by military. How about that sergeant, a Marine sergeant, whatever, killed them uh, Afghan, went in, sent back in there, went, get killed all, uh, killed a bunch of them Afghan children and women, went in there, they went, played, and shot them, killed them, then took off the base and come back on the base. What are they going to do with him, Eddie? 
They're probably not hanging from it. Yeah, they're they probably going to fry him. I don't know. I, you know, I, I you get this, this, is, this is a guy here, I think it was on his fifth deployment, and it had a traumatic brain injury or a previous deployment. A trauma? Or a fourth one? Yeah, he had a bad brain injury, so I, you know, I, I might want to yeah. question but the doctor. that, that, that was well, probably declaring it. Or yeah. See, I don't, I don't really know enough about it other yeah. than what y'all yeah. yeah. the papers. They never know. received a purple okay. heart. Okay. And so it know. wasn't a bomb. I, I think he's just been over there too long, too, uh, too much. Been over there too damn long. And that's what snap. it is. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, just, you're right. You've you been over there too damn long. Yeah. God only created the human body and the human mind to be able to withstand so much. You know, and there's a lot of breaking points. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah. see Mr. Corey Norris just walked in. Somebody told me you might have an announcement to make. So I was out of Fort Jackson today. I was working for the Red Cross and I accidentally set in on a briefing from the JAG office and they stated that if you saw a target on the battlefield or in a town, you as a sniper or something like that, and you was looking through your scope and you saw a target, before you shot him, you had to call back and get permission to shoot him. Uh, so, shooting those uh, kids and the women and sleeping people, he didn't have permission to shoot them. I actually think the group of them went and got drunk and yeah. went yeah, you, shouldn't be you know, either because they're not supposed to have alcohol over there. But <laughs> you, ne you never know what happened, man. I mean, that's, that's all. He may not have even did it. It may have been some other people that did it and said, blame it on Charlie here. He's had a brain injury. No, I mean, they caught him crawling through the fence. You know, I mean, I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, he's the only one outside the wire. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of good information on television. Yeah, you don't. I, no, you know, no. It's just like, it's just how, many, how many of y'all heard of Pat? How many of y'all remember Pat Tillman? Remember him? Yeah. He was the yeah. Oh, yeah. former football star for, uh, oh, yeah. for Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And... He enlisted, came in as an enlisted man, just like I did, into the United States Army, became a ranger, went to Afghanistan. And then, when it, you know, when it came out, you know, that he was killed in Afghanistan. Yeah. And it had a big article about him, about how he, he, he died as a hero, saving his buddies. And that's what we believed for a long time. But his parents did an, started doing an inquiry on that because they were getting a different story from the soldiers he served with in Afghanistan. And it finally came out a few years later that, yes, Pat Tillman was killed in Afghanistan, but he wasn't killed by enemy fire. He was killed by friendly fire. Right. Yeah. You know, so we never, you know, Many a soldier when, stories, when stories first come out, uh, half the time, we're not getting the truth. And it takes several years for some people to, to go out and really do an investigation to finally bring the truth to light. So the result is ultimately.